The Graham Headache Center at Brigham and Women's Faulkner Hospital is named after John Ruskin Graham, a physician and researcher who began studying headache here in the 1950s. He drew together physicians with clinical and research interest in headache, developing one of the first headache centers in the country. In 1987, the center was renamed in his honor. The center thrived in the 1990s, but then experienced a period of decline in the early 2000s. In 2006, I was hired as Chief of Neurology in advance of a merger of Faulkner Hospital with the Brigham and Women's Hospital just three miles away. My first and only thought, really, was to ask Dr. Elizabeth Loder to join us. She had been working in the area as a headache specialist and had a strong national reputation. I was very excited when Dr. Rizzoli asked me if I'd be willing to return to the center, which had fallen on some hard times. And for me, the idea of rejuvenating and reinvigorating the Graham Headache Center with its wonderful, long-standing reputation for headache care was very exciting and irresistible. In 2009, headache medicine became a recognized specialty accredited by the United Council for Neurologic Subspecialties. For the first time, there would be doctors who, after specialized training and testing, could officially be called headache specialists. Now, to accomplish that, obviously, we needed training programs. And at the John Graham Headache Center, we applied, we were accredited, and we became one of the first headache medicine fellowship training programs in the United States. And we now provide services at nine sites across the Mass General Brigham system. The fellowship training program is now divided among the Brigham Faulkner Hospital, Boston Children's Hospital, and Massachusetts General Hospital. The Graham Headache Center has taken on the care of more than a thousand new outpatients in the 2022 fiscal year, and we're working with the active patient population of more than 8,800 people in total. My name is Dr. Shu Hanzu, and I'm the clinical director of the headache division at Brigham and Women's. Headache is a common clinical problem, and many affected individuals experience significant disability. Our response has been to grow to try and meet the huge clinical need, and at the same time, be able to provide cutting-edge treatments and contribute to research efforts. Our physicians and advanced practice providers bring a variety of subspecialty skills and research interests to advance the care of our patients. One of the cutting edge treatments that we use for treatment of prevention of migraine is Botox injections or onobotulinum A toxin injections. These are injections that are placed all over in the face, in the head, and in the shoulders every three months. And the goal is to prevent the migraine before it even occurs. So we're turning down that headache frequency for patients. We have many discussions with patients as we go along, determining if they're a candidate for Botox, if they feel like they are ready to proceed with Botox, if we feel like it would be a good option for them. Botox, along with other preventive options that we consider and we prescribe to patients, has taken some of these patients literally from the brink of disability to now having a more fulfilling life. Patients are able to work, they're able Able to participate more readily in their daily activities, they're more available to participate in social activities, and more present with their family life. Overall, it's changed my life in terms of just feeling better mentally. I don't have to worry about getting migraines all the time, and I always know that I can get in touch with them if I, if I need more medication, and I can keep my appointments consistent, getting Botox, and it's just greatly improved my everyday, everyday life. Another important treatment modality in headache management is complementary and integrative care. I'm the headache physician at the Osher Clinical Center for Integrative Medicine. The Osher Clinical Center is one of seven such centers in the world that offers complementary and integrative medicine in the setting of academic medical center. Here at Brigham and Women's Hospital, we have a world-class team of clinicians who treat many of my patients. We offer acupuncture, chiropractic care, craniosacral therapy, yoga therapy, and nutrition and health coaching, as well as other modalities. I combine these treatments with medications as appropriate and work with each patient to create an individualized care plan. We offer migraine workshops for patients, as well as mindfulness and meditation therapies geared specifically for people with migraine. My name is Angeliki Vagansis, and I'm a neurologist and headache specialist at the Graham Headache Center. I've worked at Southern Jamaica Plain Health Center for the past three years with the goal of providing access to patients who face systemic barriers to neurologic and headache specialty care. 
At Southern Jamaica Plain Health Center, I assess patients for neurological consultations as well as for tertiary headache services, which include medication management, procedures including Botox and nerve blocks. So by embedding a neurology clinic within a community health center, we're able to tap into the resources dedicated to overcoming some of the barriers that patients face in accessing healthcare. For example, at Southern Jamaica Plain, there are dedicated providers who help patients access resources for stable housing, to overcome food insecurity, and to access transportation to the health center. My lab studies the genetics and the cell types that are involved in migraine, and we're trying to help identify new molecules that are expressed in these cells that we'll, we can target to inhibit the types of pain people experience during a headache. Philanthropy has played a major role in the trajectory of my lab. It has helped take on really high-risk, high-reward experiments that just aren't ready for traditional sources of funding. And these types of investments have really led to new breakthroughs in the lab that have then gone on to get major new funding from the NIH and other sources and potentially even become therapeutic targets going forward.